Okay, so hi, I'm Wilson, and I'm going to give you an update on the FRMM project. Uh, so traditionally, this project is led by uh, Dr. Sarah Elgin in WashU, and the new projects will be led by uh, Dr. Braveman at St. Joseph's uh, University. And so uh, in the past, we've used uh, Drosophila comparative genomics uh, to try to understand the overall organization and evolution uh, of the F element uh, because it has a series of very interesting uh, characteristics, uh, both combination of most, well, mostly heterochromatic characteristics. Uh, it also exhibit uh, some euchromatic uh, characteristics in terms of gene density, for example. So the first paper uh, that we looked at is uh, Drosophila viridis, uh, and then we expanded that to look at three additional species in Drosophila erecta, uh, Grimshai, and Morophensis. And then more recent paper looking at Drosophila and Nasty. Uh, more recently, we have uh, looked at species that are more closely related to Drosophila melagaster, uh, so five different species. Uh, and those species were selected because they had the ideal distance uh, for identifying, uh, use uh, phylogenetic footprinting to identify regulatory regions. And uh, the next set of projects that we work on uh, is a set of species where the F element has expanded to various degrees, uh, and I see bipectinata, kakwai, and takahashi. So just a brief update on the motif project. Uh, so last summer, uh, four students at WashU reconciled 169 genes. Uh, 642 isoforms from Takashi F and D elements. And so in aggregate, uh, what we have is the total of 303 projects from the F element and 315 projects from the D element, uh, where we have uh, reconciled gene models uh, for five different Drosophila species. And so all of that is completed and we have a data set that's ready to go. Uh, last fall, we have a group of students that uh, help us to make more progress on the transcription start site annotations. Uh, at this point, this data set is also frozen, uh, so they're ready for downstream analysis. Uh, total, we have uh, annotations for 331 uh, unique promoters from the F element and 440 uh, promoters from the D element. The ones that are highlighted in NA here, we have some submissions, uh, but not enough uh, as a set uh, for downstream analysis. Uh, so we're going to augment that with uh, RNA polymerase 2 chip-seq data to help define the TSS search regions. And then we can then use that uh, to, for our motif finding and looking for enrichment patterns. And we'll do the phylogenetic footprinting analysis with a variety of tools uh, using MAGMA, uh, for example, uh, for looking at conserved regions and identify regulatory motifs uh, within uh, all of these species. Uh, so the four students who did the work, uh, reconciliation work last summer uh, also uh, did a preliminary analysis uh, of the transcription start sites uh, in Takashi. Uh, and they used a tool uh, called MEAN, uh, which is uh, using expectation maximization uh, to identify um, uh, significant motifs that enrich in this collection of sequences. So the basic idea is that we have 108 TSS search regions uh, that the students have defined and reconciled. Uh, when they put that through uh, this program mean, and it comes up with number of motifs uh, that are uh, significantly enriched in this uh, collection of sequences. So in this case, 49 of the 108 TSS search regions uh, have the motif sequence logo that's shown here. And the height of the letters just correspond to the degree of conservation uh, of these sequences. Then we can compare each of these motifs to a known data, uh, database of known motifs. Uh, and so for instance, the query here is the motif one. And we can then search the FlyWreck version two database and get a significant hit uh, to the uh, Tupu and um, summaries two motif the binding site in, the, uh, in that database uh, with false discovery rate of uh, eight times 10 to the minus five. And so these are types of analysis that we can do with all of the search regions and then see common patterns uh, from these um, uh, enrichment type uh, de novo motif discovery analyses. So the next project uh, that we've started in fall uh, is looking at ANSC. And we previously published a paper in uh, ANSC as part of GP, uh, work by GP students. Uh, and so far, based on the assembled portions of the F element, the current estimate is that there's at least a 14.66 uh, expansion of the F element in NSC compared to Madagascar. 
And this was a previous publication in G3 uh, with 239 co-authors uh, participated as students. Uh, but that, uh, this study only analyzed uh, 13 genes uh, within a 1.4 megabase uh, region of this element. And the primary reason for that is that we uh, need to do a lot of manual sequence improvement prior to being able to do the analysis. And so some of you uh, might remember a program called CANSET uh, for uh, looking at sequence improvement. Uh, and so the orange and black uh, boxes here just correspond to direct and inverted repeats uh, within this uh, FASMIN. Uh, and essentially what you can see are essentially this entire region has very high repeat density. And the red lines that you see down below indicate inconsistent for reverse mate pairs. So most likely your reads were misplaced. So the types of issues uh, that you may encounter would be data that got put in the wrong place. So you may need to pull them out and put them back in the, to fill in the gap, for example, as illustrated in the diagram. Uh, in some cases, we may need to go back to the NCBI trace archive to bring in data to fill in those gaps. After all of those uh, types of rearrangement, we then need to confirm the assembly. Uh, so we have restriction digest uh, at that point. Uh, where we can compare uh, the in silico assembly uh, with the real uh, digest. So uh, in order for us to actually proceed to the next step, then we need to have high quality assemblies before the entire F element, uh, besides that 1.4 megabase region. Uh, so luckily there is now a new PEC bio assembly uh, that's generated by the Clark Lab at Cornell. Uh, and that's a much higher quality assembly than the original uh, comparative analysis Freeze one or CAF one assembly. Uh, so, looking, so there are a variety of metrics that we can look at, uh, but in terms of uh, total ungapped size, we see three megabases increase, uh, number of contacts, uh, so contiguous sequences uh, has substantially decreased, uh, so there are only 235, uh, so there are a lot fewer gaps in the assembly. Uh, and the contacts in terms of the M50, uh, what we see is that those contexts are much larger, uh, around six megabases compared to only 95 KB. Uh, so that's essentially the midpoint uh, relative to an entire genome assembly size. And we only need seven of those scaffolds in order to cover uh, that N50. And in fact, the NCBI RefSeq database has now switched uh, the representative genome uh, from uh, the uh, CAF1 assembly uh, to the new RS2 assembly. Uh, so that's what uh, you see at the CPI when you search against the uh, NSC genome. Uh, so using this genome, uh, we identify uh, seven purity of element scaffolds. Uh, strategy here is that we know that there are 80 protein choline genes uh, as of release uh, 6.32 uh, from uh, Madagascar. Uh, and so we can then ask where are they uh, in the F element in the NSC assembly. Uh, to identify F element scaffolds. So we can find uh, 75 of these genes, uh, 26 of them is in a single scaffold, uh, that's about 6.2 megabases. And so from, uh, so th this is the set of projects, uh, context that we can use uh, to create the projects for the students uh, last fall. So scientific questions for the project, uh, we want to, in addition to ANSC, uh, looking at uh, three other species, Drosophila bipectinata, Kokoai, and Takashi. And they, um, at least based on cytology, I indicated they under, have undergone different levels of expansion. And the scientific questions of interest uh, is looking at the impact of the expansion on both the epigenomic landscape uh, as well as the gene characteristics. The factors uh, transpose on simple repeats that may have contributed to the expansion. Uh, and the gene rearrangements or local duplications and versions uh, that might have happened uh, that lead to uh, the expansion. Uh, and then where are we right now? Uh, we have the NSC genome assembly available and we're in the process of generating PEC bio assemblies, which I'll get to uh, at the end of my talk in terms of the current status. And we have uh, five students that are working this summer on reconciliation uh, as well as TSS annotations and uh, micropublications. So some of the resources that we now have uh, in the annotation projects for NSE that we didn't have in our prior study uh, include the tissue-specific RNA-seq data uh, as well as the Rampage and ATAC-seq data. 
Uh, so rampage data and latex seq data are very useful uh, for identifying transcription start site. Uh, so we have data from 21 uh, embryonic stages, so the uh, either our embryo sample didn't work uh, in that case. Uh, but essentially, we have base pair resolution uh, of the transcription start sites. Uh, so you can see a rampage peak here, and essentially a density correspond to the 5 prime in uh, the initiation sites for all of the uh, for this gene, red 23. Uh, similarly, TechSeq uh, gives us the accessibility data, uh, similar to DNA's one hypersensitive sites, uh, and so that helps us define the search region. And so for a rampage data, we can run a program called TS Architect uh, to help define the narrow search region uh, that, that covers all of the rampage peaks. Uh, and then we can use a TechSeq data to help us to define the wide search region. Uh, so with the experimental data that's available, the definition of TSS is a lot simpler. Uh, so for last fall, we created 65 projects and 43 faculty members uh, have, were involved in the project uh, during last um, academic year. And so as uh, so we've received uh, half of those projects with at least two submissions so far. Uh, and we also created 60 additional projects from the D element uh, in March. And so the de-armament projects would be uh, closer to traditional projects uh, in terms of difficulty, uh, whereas the f element has some interesting challenges. So I've listed four challenges here, and in uh, the slide deck that is available in the Google Drive, uh, there are the two other examples with pseudogene clusters and insertion of mitochondrial DNA segments uh, into the f element. But what I want to highlight in this talk is just expansion uh, of the f element genes and partial gene duplications. Uh, so, uh, so these genes are a lot larger on the f element. For example, for PMCA is 167 kb compared to 26 kb uh, in Madagascar. Most of that expansion uh, is due to repeats in transposons, as you can see uh, in the repeat masker track. And so what that means is that we need to use the more sophisticated algorithms uh, and uh, optimize some of the alignment parameters uh, in order to get um, better uh, evidence for students to do annotations. Uh, another interesting thing that we find is partial gene duplications. Uh, so in this case, we have a hit to the end of the DYLK3 gene. Uh, so the last coding exon is highlighted in the purple arrow here. Uh, and then the blast extract is indicating there's a, another region uh, that has similarity. And what you also see is that GenScan is picking up a lot of open ring frames that overlap with the tandem repeat. So we actually did a blastic search uh, of those contacts in, uh, of contact 24 against the CDS. We see multiple matches. And so in this case, we see one alignment that almost covered the entire uh, coding exon, 95 amino acids. Uh, and then we see another hit in a different location uh, that's identical to that. And there are 10 similar hits in this region. And so what we see uh, also are partial fragments and we have evidence of in-frame stop codons uh, and there are different levels in terms of covering a different degree of the exons uh, as well. So if we look back at this region, uh, what we actually see is that this is the uh, actual coding exon at the end. And then we have all of these helotrons uh, that are actually from NSC uh, and by picking out a helotron M1, and so making all of these copies of the coding exons. So in terms of future directions uh, for continuing annotations of the F and D element projects uh, in fall 2020, and adding additional species uh, if there's demand. Uh, and then we have session H uh, working group two uh, on June 14th, uh, where we'll talk about where Dr. Uh, Briefman will lead the discussion uh, on the proposal for the F element expansion project, additional experimental data uh, that we might need uh, for that project, like Rampage or ATAXI or CAGE data uh, for the three other species. And then we're in the process of constructing new pack bio assemblies so by Pekinada, Kekawaii, and Takahashi. And so this was. Uh, Sequencing data generated by the Madonna Genome Institute uh, here at WashU uh, using a new SQL2 system. And I just want to show you the uh, preliminary statistics. Uh, so the first column here is the contact N50 uh, for the Bianco assembly. So those are the published assembly. And the unit uh, is kilobases. 
And using the new CANU assembly with the PacBio data, we can get to a megabase scale. So we expect that the F element uh, assembly for these species would be much better and have a much better um, set of regions that uh, your students could annotate. And during the summer, uh, we'll be generating additional assemblies. Uh, so we've ran uh, six different assemblers so far uh, for all of these species, and we'll be doing optimization uh, in terms of weed scrubbing uh, and error correction and adjusting the uh, assembly uh, parameters uh, in order to uh, make progress. Uh, we also have access to some nanoport data that we plan to use for scaffolding. Uh, so with that, uh, thank you for your attention. I'm happy to take any questions. Uh, so the smart cell ADM, uh, you can run in two mode. The mode that we ran it in uh, is in um, the CLR, so the consensus uh, co continuous long read. Uh, so those are about 90% uh, accuracy. Uh, and, but you can also generate hi-fi data, and so that's much higher quality, so you get 99.9% uh, accuracy. Uh, in general, uh, for the purpose of uh, assembly, as long as your error profile for the pack file reads follow Poisson distribution, uh, then it's just a matter of sequencing depth in order to get the quality uh, metric that you want. So, other questions? So. Uh -huh. So Wilson, will there be sequence finishing projects this fall? Um, not likely uh, because, so it will be a different type of finishing uh, that the students would be involved in. Um, so if there's interest, uh, we can talk about maybe thinking about how we can introduce assemblies uh, into the curriculum and uh, actually have students maybe doing a portion of the um, pack bio assembly, uh, but because we, uh, but in terms of the uh, traditional finishing type projects, uh, probably not unless we can have gaps that we think that could be solved. Um, because essentially the remaining gaps, for example, in the uh, current and SA assembly are due to uh, tandem repeats, and so typical generic PCR protocol probably wouldn't be able to get through those regions. So, other questions? 